important things you can learn in Microsoft Word is how to format your page with elements such as margins and page breaks. Formatting your pages makes them look more attractive and makes them easier to read. Page margins are the white space around the top, bottom, left, and right of your document. Margins let Microsoft Word know where to start placing text at the top of a document, when to move on to the next page at the bottom, where to start typing text on the left side, and when to move to the next line on the right. Let's change the margins in this document. Click the Margins button on the Page Layout tab in the Page Setup group. Normal margins are 1 inch margins at the top, bottom, left, and right. We'll change to Narrow Margins from the Custom Margins option at the bottom of the drop down menu. We'll enter 0.5 in the top, left, bottom, and right fields. The settings can apply to the whole document and we can set it to be the default from this area. We can also set our page orientation here. After we've made the changes, we'll click OK. Word documents have their orientation set to vertical by default. However, you can change it to horizontal as well. Landscape and portrait refer to how the document will be displayed on screen and printed. Landscape sets your document to be viewed and printed horizontally, while portrait is viewed and printed vertically. We'll set our document to a landscape orientation by using the orientation icon next to the margins icon. Page size is important if your document will be printed. The default page size in Microsoft Word is 8.5 by 11 the same as standard printing paper. However, for different types of documents, you may need to change the page size. We'll click the size icon to view the different preset paper sizes. We'll change our paper size to 8.5 by 14. Page colors can improve the look of your document by adding more depth to it. You can even add a gradient texture, pattern, or picture using the Fill Effects option. We'll change the color of our document by clicking the Design tab and then the Page Color button located in the Page Background group. We can hover over the different colors to preview the change and then select a predefined color from the menu or create our own color. To do this, we'll click More Colors. From here, we can explore more of the standard colors or choose the Custom tab and experiment until we find the exact color we need. We'll select a general area on the color spectrum and then use the slider on the right to lighten or darken the color. We'll click OK when we're done. Borders can be applied to an entire page an entire document, or just certain sections of the document. They can also be applied to paragraphs. We'll add a page border by clicking the page border icon next to page colors. We can set the type of border under settings and even add or remove them in the preview area. We can also change the width of the border apply a new color, and change the line style. We could also add shading to the border by clicking the Shading tab. When we're finished, we'll click OK. Columns can make your documents easier to read, look professional, and allow you to use space more efficiently. Adding columns to a document is incredibly easy. 
We'll change our original document so it has two columns. We'll just go to the Page Layout tab and click the Columns icon in the Page Setup group. Then choose Two Columns. We can also use the More Columns button under the same Columns icon to be more specific in the appearance of our columns. We can change the column width, determine if we want equal columns, and at what point in the document we want our columns to be applied. We'll choose to modify the columns from 2 to 3. Then click OK. A header appears at the very top of a document. It typically includes the page number and title of the document. A footer appears at the bottom of each page. It can also contain page numbers along with other information such as the author name. Headers and footers will generally appear on every page of a document. Let's look at how to add a header. To access the header command, go to the Insert tab, then click the header button located in the header and footer group. Word 2013 provides several preset styles you can choose from. The styles include blank styles with text placeholders and other styles with additional formatting. For more control, let's select Edit Header. We can go to the Home tab and change our formatting, like font size and alignment. Let's do that now. Click the Home tab and increase the font and center the alignment. Let's type the title of our paper in the header area. Next, we'll remove our original title from the top of the first column. We'll look through our document to verify the placement of our header. Now we can add a footer. We'll click on the Insert tab again and click the Footer button in the Header and Footer group. We can choose a style like we did before. We'll choose Blank and type our footer text in the placeholder provided at the bottom of the page. We can return to the main document by double-clicking inside the main part of the document and then verify the placement of our footer. If we simply want to insert page numbers, then we'll click the Page Number button in the Header and Footer group. Click Insert, the Page Number button, and we'll choose to add the page number to the bottom of the page. It will now be added to the footer. There may be times when you need a cover page for a document. It isn't difficult to add a cover page if you need one. Let's say we need to create a cover page for our report. We'll go to the Insert tab and click Cover Page in the Pages group. Now we can view the predefined styles available and choose our cover page. Now we'll have access to a template that contains placeholders that will allow us to fill in our title and subtitle. We'll add the text American Writers in the Document Title placeholder. Then, we'll add the text Fiction in the Document Subtitle placeholder. You may be asked to add a blank page to a report or another type of document you are creating. For example, we need to add a blank page between the cover page and the start of our document. We'll scroll down to the beginning of the document and then click in front of the first line. 
Then click the blank page button in the Pages group of the Insert tab. The blank page will appear between the cover page and our current page. Creating a readable document requires good formatting. If you have a large document, you may want to break up subjects by starting them on their own page. A page break is the point where one page ends and another begins. You can add a page break anywhere in your document to make sure your text from one page doesn't move to the next. To add a page break, go to the Insert tab and click the Page Break button in the Pages group. The page break is added and the text has been moved to the next page.